good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this uh, third Tuesday of the month. Uh, this is when we meet regularly, uh, third Tuesday of the month, every month at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. It is a virtual meeting, so anybody can join us from anywhere. It is open and free to the public. You do not have to be in the cybersecurity or information security realm of things or have a job in it. You just need to have an interest. Come hang out, come network with us and learn something new. Have that curiosity, have a lot of fun with us. So welcome for coming out. Uh, we really enjoy having you all here. This is Southwest Florida InfoSec Community, or, or SwiffleSec for short, located on the Southwest Florida Gulf Coast. And we're also a recognized DEF CON group, DC239. You can see our little Panama Jack there at the bottom. As well as, we're also Space Coast InfoSec Community, or just Space Coast Sec for short, located in the Space Coast of Florida, which is in Brevard County. And we're a recognized DEF CON group on that side of things, too, is DC321. And there's our little astronaut Jack uh, for our symbol for the DEF CON group. Coming up is a bunch of QR codes because we love that all cybersecurity people love QR codes. So we just had to throw these in there for all of you. You can quickly whip out your phone if you want to and scan them. They are safe, at least the last time we checked. Uh, they'll take you to our websites and our social media. Uh, don't worry if you don't catch these. We will post all the links in chat so people will have those available uh, throughout this meeting. We are also um, We also have a favorite charity or charity of favor which is the Innocent Lives Foundation. You can see their little logo and their QR code to take you to uh, either donate to them or find out other ways to help out. We really suggest you check them out. Innocent Lives Foundation, if you've never heard about them before, uh, they work diligently to through open source intelligence techniques and others to de-anonymize uh, child sexual abuse material, authors, spreaders, creators, sellers, traders, whatever you want to say, all those, all the all those types of, of folks, they try and go and find out their true identity and make a case file that they can turn over to law enforcement. So far, unfortunately and fortunately both, uh, they've turned over 600 plus cases to law enforcement over the last couple of years that they've been in operations. So they're really doing a lot of good. They also work uh, in their communities. A lot of times they go out and make presentations or do presentations. They put up things on the website of how you can help protect your family, your kids and others in your community uh, to keep people safe and especially stop the spread of child sexual abuse materials. So give you things to be aware of uh, as well when your kids are interacting with others online. So check them out at Innocent Lives Foundation. So Florida, as I was mentioning earlier before we started, it has a lot of tech groups and continues to grow. Here's just some of them that we're uh, involved with or have partnered with in the past on both coasts of Florida. So we've got the Southwest Florida Coders. The uh, It says we love Python, but that is PyLadies or uh, Python of Southwest Florida or Southwest Florida Python. I forget. I always get it mixed up. And then we have the newest chapter, ISC Squared chapter here on the Florida Space Coast. They just got officially recognized in October. Woohoo! Um, then Swiffle Sex uh, logo there that I spoke about earlier, our Space Coast Sec logo. Then there's VR and AR of Southwest Florida. They are getting ready to change leadership, but it looks like it's going to be quite a smooth transition. So we don't expect a break in their meetings. Uh, also, most of these groups meet monthly at some time during the month. And most of them will have a, even if they do a physical meetup, they will have a virtual uh, link to join in on all the fun and learn stuff for you to learn stuff. It is very rare that they have just a physical event these days, although I know, I think with the VR and AR, their last meeting is going to be physical only, uh, just for logistics uh, of what they're doing for that meeting and doing the leadership transfer and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, there's also Space Coast Cyber, which is a company here that does CMMC uh, auditing and also training. So if you're interested in learning about CMMC auditing, want to become an auditor uh, in that realm, uh, check them out. They run the social here in the area, which is fantastic. That means we don't have to. And uh, their social is open to everyone as well. It's a lot of fun. They usually do one one a month. Gets you out of the house, gets you down to the pub. It's family friendly. It's pet friendly. Uh, it's a great location. There's outdoor seating. Of course, the weather is almost always great here, except when we have those hurricanes that come through uh, and the summer rains. I digress. Anyway, we have Southwest Florida data as well. So anything data, 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 that's data warehouses, data lakes, data swamps, data rivers, like all that data stuff, uh, privacy, uh, sometimes it's a mix of ML and AI now, because of course we all know that that uses a lot of data too. And there's a variety of other groups that I don't have logos here for, uh, but I'll list on one of the pages coming up as URLs, which will also get posted to the chat. There's also the Tech Alliance of Southwest Florida. I didn't want to leave them out. 
Um, I will move actually to the next slide to talk about them. So there's several of us that are uh, members of the Tech Alliance Southwest Florida. We decided to group together to better promote the communities here in Florida and have a quarterly meeting where we talk at a high level on some subject that is uh, in the current events um, right now. So it's very relevant to people. And we don't want to do deep dives on it. We don't want to lose people on the topic. We want to really have people come in from the community, know nothing about what the what the, the the details are about the topic, but actually learn about why this is in current events. Why is it in the news? Uh, what is what do I need to know about it? Right? Why is it important to me? So we have these meetings quarterly. The next one coming up is going to be in January. It's actually talking about music production and the use of technology in music production, including I think even AI, um, since that's been a big trend lately as well. So the, you can see here that these are the groups that are in the alliance so far. And I'm missing a logo because we actually just accepted back an older group that had left the Alliance and now they're back, uh, which is Tech Knights of Southwest Florida. So hopefully next month I'll have their logo on here as well. So you can see here we have Swiffle Sec or Southwest Florida Sec, which is us, Southwest Florida Data, AR and VR of Southwest Florida, Python Southwest Florida, Southwest Florida Coders. So meetings coming up for these groups through December through January. Uh, some of them, it is the end of the year. And so they haven't scheduled, they've already had their meeting this month and they haven't scheduled the next meeting yet. So you'll see I've marked them to be determined. So Southwest Florida Coders, Python of Southwest Florida, they're to be determined still. They'll have meetings coming up. Just watch their meetup page. Again, we'll be posting those links. Our next meeting is gonna be, a, gonna be in January 16th. Again, that third Tuesday of the month, and it will be online and it's finding your niche. One of the biggest questions we've got this year. Now, all right. Thank you very much. Sorry about the interruption. So as I was saying, uh, one of the largest questions we have come up this year has been from folks trying to get into the cybersecurity industry. They've heard great things about it. They have a lot of interest about it, but they don't know how to get started. And when they look, they just get inundated with information. They're trying to swallow from the fire hose, if you will. And they don't know where to begin. And they may even get discouraged because of it. So we've got somebody who's been a, a huge success story for us. Um, is going to come in and give a, give a talk on this. She recently transitioned into cybersecurity from an HR or talent acquisition position uh, where she had been working, um, I don't know how many years, but just decided one day, hey, I want to move over to cybersecurity. I'm tired of finding people uh, for these positions. I want to actually be that person in this position. Uh, so we helped her out. We gave her a lot of resources. And she's now been in that position for, I think, nine plus months and really enjoying it. And we've asked her back to give a talk on how she did it and and help people who are trying to break into the industry, help them narrow down their scope, hence finding your niche or niche, however you want to pronounce it, um, to help them narrow that down so that they get less discouraged and actually can find their passion. Because there's so many things out there uh, in cybersecurity that you, you could be doing and trying to figure it out can, can be difficult. So we're looking forward to that talk. Uh, join us January 16th. VR and AR Southwest Florida, their year-in community meetup is coming up on December 21st. So if you find yourself in Southwest Florida, specifically the Fort Myers area or in a commutable distance, join them at the Collaboratory in Fort Myers. And then the Tech Alliance meetup, as I mentioned, is going to have their next meeting, their quarterly meeting on January 18th at the Collaboratory as well. It'll be a hybrid meeting. So if you're not in the area, you can join virtually. And that is going to be our network party. It's our New Year's party. Um and they're going to be talking about music and technology, as I mentioned earlier. So what technology does in the music industry, what kind of roles does it play, and maybe even the use of AI now um, as it's getting better and able to even mimic uh, other artists um, alive or dead. So interesting topic. Other upcoming events, again, these links will be dumped in the chat. So don't worry about trying to uh, write these down or anything. I'm going to skip right past this slide because I, I will dump it in the chat. I just want to mention some of the organizations I hadn't already mentioned. So we got OWASP of Bonita Springs, which is there on the Gulf Coast. They are going to restart things in January. In fact, we're co-hosting with them for that Finding Your Niche um, meeting. So look for them to be starting back up. They will start having quarterly meetings again. And then there are Hack Miami that we, that we mentioned earlier. They have a, I want to say monthly meeting. I can't remember if it's weekly or monthly. I want to say monthly, usually on a Saturday. Uh, so if you find yourselves in the Miami area and want to check things out, um, reach out to them. There's the ISSA of South Florida chapter, the ISACA South Florida chapter, OWA South Florida as well. Um, there's these chapters here in Central Florida too, where we're at. I think most of these also exist up here as well as the ISC Square chapter I mentioned earlier. Some other groups and upcoming uh, activities. So the Miami area has DC 
or DEF CON group 305. Their next social meetup is on the 2nd of January. You can see the information there. Our next event for the DEF CON 321 group or Space Coast Sec is going to happen on January 7th. So this is not our regular meeting where we have presentations like we do tonight or like what we're going to do on January 16th. These Sunday evening uh, events, we try to have them every Sunday at 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on our Discord channel. And we practice CTFs. We use the Try Hack Me platform and we just use the free tier so that way anybody can join us and they don't have to put in any money towards it. And they get to learn CTF skills. So it's a fun time. Come out, hang out with us for a couple hours. Even if you don't want to actually practice those skills, you just want to lurk for a bit, that's okay too. Hang out with us and um, be the peanut gallery if you want to. Make fun, all that kind of stuff. It's a fun time. So again, come out, join with us on Sunday evenings. Our next one's going to be the 7th of January. We stopped them for this month because Try Hack Me is doing their Advent of Hacking event. If you don't know about that event, it started on December 1st and runs through Christmas, of course, Advent, right? And every day they have a new challenge and where you get to learn a new skill. And it's all free. And there's a raffle and prizes and stuff that you can win. So check that out sometime if you're interested. Also, as I mentioned, OWASP Benita Springs Meetup, they're restarting and they're going to be co-hosting with us on January 16th. Other upcoming events, I'm, I'm, there's upcoming and more upcoming. We will get through these slides eventually. So the next upcoming event for the ISC Square chapter is still to be determined. They do usually have them uh, once a month now, especially now that they're recognized as the official chapter. I think they're taking this month off because it's the holidays and usually they have it at the end of the month. And of course, that's falling between Christmas and New Year's and any other celebrated holidays during that time. So they probably won't have a meeting this month. So check them out in January if you're here on the Space Coast. Also, Space Coast Cyber, who I mentioned does the social meetups in the area, they just had theirs earlier this month on December 7th. So their next meetup uh, for their in-person social and networking will happen in January sometime, likely the beginning of the month. That's been the pattern the last two months is the beginning of the month since the INC squared holds theirs at the end of the month. And then that way there's no conflicts. So watch their page. If you're interested in, in the area, uh, come out and hang out with us, have a drink, alcohol or non-alcohol doesn't matter. Like I said, it's family friendly and uh, network with some other professionals. It's a great time. Everybody's super friendly and it is again, family and pet friendly too. But first, before we get to the presentation, I would just like to take this time to thank a few different people and organizations. So Space Coast InfoSec community and Southwest Florida InfoSec community, I want to thank the following. I want to thank the Innocent Lives Foundation for everything they do to remove child sexual abuse material from the internet and get those who produce it, trade it, sell it, all that kind of stuff gory stuff off the streets, off the internet, de-identified and turn over to law enforcement. So thank you, Innocent Lives Foundation. If you're looking for a charity to support, they are definitely a great cause. Uh, check them out at that QR code here in the lower right-hand corner. We, all know that we also want to thank tonight's guests for sharing their time and knowledge with us. So thanks, Mike, for coming out tonight after me reaching out to you and pestering you like, we really need you to do this presentation because it's a super interesting topic and we're really excited to have you here tonight. So thank you for joining us tonight. And our members, without which Space Coast Sec and Swiftful Sec would not be successful. So everybody who here online who's joined us tonight, taking time out of their Tuesday evening, right before the holidays, 6.30 p.m., right around dinner time too. Thank you so much for showing up. It's because of you all that we kept do, keep doing this. Otherwise, it's just me being here, talking to myself. Sometimes that's fun. Sometimes it's not. So thank you for coming out. We really appreciate you all to be here month after month. Uh, we are now moving quickly towards our five years of monthly meetings. Our fifth year is going to happen in June, and we are thinking about doing something really big. Stay tuned for that announcement if we decide to go forward with it. Uh, but yeah, June will be five years. So thank you. Keep coming out and joining us. Learn new things. Hang out with us in network. We really appreciate you all. And then Southwest Florida Space Coast Community Organizations who selflessly operate to lift others. All those organizations I spoke about before, all of them except for those professional organizations, but all the community organizations, they do this for free out of their pocket. They're, everything they do doesn't require attendees to pay for anything. Nobody pays tickets, attendance fees, membership fees, nothing. So these organizers, myself included, we do this to lift others in our community because we want to give back. We, we've all got the means, right? Some people don't. So we come out and we do these to help people raise awareness, network, find opportunities, learn new topics, and just get ahead. Because by lifting others, we're lifting the whole community up, including ourselves. So why not do this? Why not be able to give back and, and, and expect to pay it forward when that's what we hope you all 
uh, come away from this, not only with new knowledge and new friends, but that someday you're going to pay this for it too. So anyway, thank you everybody for, for tonight and keeping the lights on and bringing in presentations, all that kind of stuff and joining us. Anyway, I've spoken too long. Now everybody's here to see Mike. So Mike, I'm going to turn off my sharing and turn it over to you. And you, sir, now have sharing permissions. All right. That's dangerous. Watch out. <laughs> um, so welcome, everybody. So thank you for having me. Um, Mike reached out to me uh, for this opportunity, and I definitely love to um, talk about what is a passion project of mine, which has grown much larger than just its beginnings. And I'll talk about that. So um, I will share my screen. I'll just share my whole desktop, of course, because why not, right? Hopefully you can see that okay. So uh, so I am Mike Labasi, uh, I'm a professor at Sinclair College here in, in Dayton, Ohio, and um, been there full-time professor since 2017. Get ahead of myself a little bit. Um, and uh, talk about myself a little bit, just a little bit of history. Uh, but uh, before that, I was cybersecurity for about five years, full-time pen testing. And then uh, you name it, I probably did it, you know, <laughs> uh, capacity performance analysis, Linux server admin, programmer going back in time and my first gig was as a software tester my first task was y2k testing so that's why i was at intel corporation so so i've been in a lot of it for a, long, a while and I sort of came into test uh, to teaching as an adjunct just to make extra money and i found it really is just way more fulfilling so and the best part was uh i actually switched and I, i'm part-time cybersecurity and i'm also now a full-time professor so which is great because uh, the college that they let me, they, they allow you, they want you to go out there and do some side work, long as it's interfere with your classes, uh, which is good because I can bring in real skills, things that I've seen to, to my students. And in fact, I don't call my students, I call my students, you know, future colleagues <laughs> because, um, well, two of them already. You, you mentioned before an individual you have spoke, uh, this is a, uh, a woman who was a banker, one of my students, and she went, wanted to go in cybersecurity, and she did. And now she uh, moved to uh, Belgium and works for NATO for their pen testing. I like to get her to do it uh, if she can. <laughs> and that, that, the logistics of speaking is tough with that one. But And another individual who I now work with, he was one of my students. Now he's the, the director of the operations for the company I work for part-time. So it's a small community. So so anyways, um, but I'm going to talk about, which you can see my cool logo there I just had made, um, about sticker heist. So uh, it's, and this is something that um, we'll go into. So the history of it itself here, um, see, I talked about it already. I always get into my slides. But when I started in 2017 full-time, I wanted to have a hacking club. So there wasn't one, and the chair of the department was like, yeah, you know, it'd be great. We, we can just get people in. They can try it out. And I, was, and I was like, I want to go ahead and, and um, you know, so first off, of course, off, we're not a club because clubs at the school are like all kinds of rules and they have stuff. So our first hack is business process hack. We're a team. <laughs> so I can ignore all the, you got to have a constitution. You got to have a, you know, a charter. It's like, yeah, we just a bunch of people want to get together and just, just, have, just talk about cybersecurity. And it's for any student. So I run it each fall and spring semester. I started in, in fall 2018 and, um, the idea is just, hey, we put the announcement out to all, all the students. Come on if you want. You don't have to take any cyber classes. If you're just curious about cybersecurity, come in, sit down for an hour, and we'll do some stuff. And I was using the National Cyber League. Uh, you guys probably heard of that before. It's a great, great thing. And I used to get free codes if we want to compete. And I don't make them compete. And it really be more relaxed. You can sit and just ask questions watch or you can get involved and the and national site league stuff's great we put on the screen you do the you do the crypto you know the password hacking it's always fun people love password hacking you know crypto challenge and all that stuff and um but i want something more there i want something hands-on i knew that when i was coming into it so i wanted something different and um this is where the inspiration came from so i went to defcon with some colleagues in 2018 and we competed in something called the darknet challenge so I don't know if you guys have heard of that or not. Um, it's, a, it's it's a it's a I mean it's a like it's a good amount of teams. Like it's over a couple hundred. I think we came in like 50th, so not too bad. I mean we're like people don't sleep. They just do this constantly all, the whole weekend. But it's everything. It's involved in from hacking, social engineering, lock picking, you name it. In fact, you can see here there's a badge. Building the badge itself. You build the badge and you get a hash code. You get in each you know you put the hash code on your team site and you get the points for it. So, and the, the, of course, the badges of kinds of cool stuff. And um, 
so the Darkened Challenge was a lot with a blast, and um, you know we had a team of six of us. Each of us had different experience levels. My my specialty, which came from the industry, was web app pen testing. So I was the one to to put it. Hey, do you need to hack us email server? Have Mike do that. So I did that, <laughs> took care of that stuff. We had some some upon the team were better electronics, and you know, just a wide array. It was great. It was a fun thing. And, and of course, you can see here um, the challenges. And <laughs> no, no, you can't take photos at DEF CON. You know, you don't you don't get your camera out. But there was an official photographer there, and they got a picture of me picking the lock. And this thing was one of my one of my things. I was just like, this is so much fun. And my colleagues here, my department chair, you know, hacking the badge. But this thing individually was like, wow, this is like, it's cool. You pick the lock, and it gives you an updated you know, um, hash code. And, you, and then as you go each lock, it hash code changes. You take that code, you put it into a website and you get points uh, as you go through the lock. So, and I was like, you know, I was like, this is so much fun. I was having a blast with this. And then um, of course, like any good conference, you go to the vendor area, right? <laughs> so have some money set aside for vendor area. And there's a copy there. I don't know if I have a slide this or not. There's just some slides I pulled together. So, okay, they are there. It's gonna be called Hacker Boxes. Um, Fantastic company, and that this this box right here, they had this for like ten bucks off or whatever, ten percent off, and it's called Locksport. And of course, talk to the individual there, and they have to do like subscription services, and they they work with you know with um or you know with organizations and, and educational institutions, and of course, you know being in community college, you don't have a lot of money just to blow on you know all kinds of stuff. But I bought that box right there, and I was just like, this box is cool, and it had Arduino in it. And you still it's exactly like what it had. Um. And it has like some some PDFs. It just says like here, here's how you hook the RFID to the Arduino. Here's how you hook the keypad to it. Here's how you hook these different things to it. And that's all it was. But between the Darknet challenge and this, something just sparked. I'm like, I got an idea. I want to do something. And the last thing that kicked it off was walking around DEF CON. Stickers are everywhere. Well, laptop stickers, right? The hacker stickers. I'm always grabbing stickers. It's like... You know, we'll put stickers on our, on our laptops. So I think there's probably a picture. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't usually do that. I put stickers on there. I don't usually don't put stickers on my stuff, um, but I couldn't help it. I ended up peeling them off. <laughs> I'm more of a bare laptop person, but, you know, you get into it. So um, and I was like, I want to think something. And this is the idea of sticker heist came up. My brain was running here. I'm like, I can do something with this, this box of stuff. By the way, in the end of the movie, let me know. It's a good movie, by the way. <laughs> um, sneakers. Great movie. <laughs> um, actually, I used a scene for that movie in, in my in my Security Plus class. This is still valid on social engineering. But so I wanted something that had a physical component to it, a network component, a system component, and a software component. So sort of what we see in you know cybersecurity is a huge umbrella industry. Um, you know, to say you're the master of all of it would be foolish. I'm definitely not. I have some areas I'm good at, and some areas I would say I have to go Google it. <laughs> so. And that's normal, but I want to give this a taste of everything here. And so I found a way to introduce some some vulnerabilities into the system. Uh, so I got some parts together. I, already had, I had a Raspberry Pis laying around. I got a few here for Pi holes. I got running in my home network. I had a few, you know, we have a few run, a few laying around that at the school. And of course, I had the Arduino from the kit, RFID, alarm sensor, and you can, I can start piecing together what I wanted. And I started building this at home. This is actually right here, the desk right here in front of me. What 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 used to be. Um, I want to build a way you had to hack in and disable an alarm system that's protecting a box full of laptop stickers. And so that's the scenario. And of course, the scenario is is in the dark future. You know, money is no longer you know the new currency stickers, and the most expensive, the most valuable are the laptop stickers. So there's a scenario behind it. You know, and um, and also there's rules. It's a heist. So of course, you're like what's cool? You know, cut cut the power. You know, cut the cut the cables. Like no no. You know, there's no you know we have to be subtle about this. And the best part is all this stuff um, rolls back into pen testing, rules of engagement, scope of work. <laughs> so, and that's kind of something you can relate to. It's like, yeah, this is what scope work is. This is only this box itself. We're not hacking anything else. And here's the rules we have to follow. So, um, so I set about building this thing here. And this is what it started off with. Uh, this is all self-funded at the time. This is just, you know, a little bit of side money. I bought parts. And um, fall 2018, this is what I got running. Yes, it, this is a plastic Michaels art box with a Dremel tool and some drill holes <laughs> in the side. Um, and there's the box full of stickers. And at the time, I had this uh, this thing as a network device, which is horrible. I you'll see I changed that. But and this will affect when it's closed. Um, so the idea is I have the keys, I have the RFID, I can arm this arm it, 
unlock it and go, ooh, look at the stickers and rearm it and walk away. And, um, and and of course, there's the code up right there um, for the Arduino code. And I actually learned Arduino while I was doing this. Um, I've had some C background, like my bachelor's degree in the, when was that, late 90s? <laughs> and I really haven't touched it since. So, um, but it, it all came back. So that was the very first box. I drag it into into, the, into it. And there's stuff on there. The, the, screen, the screen displays certain things. Um, and of course, the loot, stickers, some stuff I bought over just, you know, Amazon and some was uh, donated from other colleagues who went to a an event, local event, or came back from DEF CON. Here's some stickers for for your for your for your box. So now I did update it. Uh, I moved this, this things inside because this was on the outside. It was getting bumped around. Uh, so, plus I thought, you know, plus when you lock it, it, this covers up a little bit of the inside. And I added an LED there, and then also there, this one's already there. So uh, these LED, and you'll see these things show us clues. And what we learn is probably you guys know the biggest part of cybersecurity of any hacking is recon sense. Recon, recon. And you'll see, I'll show you. I actually, I made my own diagram on this. Um, and I'll show it to you in a little, little bit. Let's just on my slides here. And, you know, what I always say is, of course, what would be to the, to the average person, I don't know, just a version number to the hacker, the attacker. It's like, that's value. That's information I can use. I might not need it now. It might not be a value now, but it could come in handy later. It could be as simple as an email address. It could be a version number, an IP address on a display. And so having to pick the lock to get in and find this stuff and start seeing things and start discovering stuff. Um, I, I will put out here, do you, do you want me to talk about the vulnerabilities or leave that secret? I'll open chat up, so let me know. <laughs> Yeah, probably you'd probably want to leave some things a secret, especially if you're going to publish these to YouTube. We don't want anybody to have okay. uh, an advantage okay. over others, All right. right? Unless your I, intent is to expand on it and change those challenges regularly. So, well, uh, I'll leave no. it up to so, you to make that decision. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll just drop a hint to what they are, but um, hope you still see my screen. Okay, right? Okay, so um, well, so some of them are simple things, simple as. A written down password somewhere, <laughs> you know, finding that and finding an IP address. They realize, oh, this this is, this is this has a, a network. Hey, there's a, there's a Wi-Fi, and that's why I did. I moved this. I moved off that yellow box. Put the Wi-Fi on a, on a better Pi. Can handle the, the standalone Wi-Fi. So this thing is basically a security server. Uh, it has vulnerabilities built into it. Things I've seen in in uh, just from real life. Um, but it has its own Wi-Fi, its own web server. Uh, FTP server, things like that. And then, of course, the Arduino is hooked to it and it loads the code over and the Arduino is running the security system and there's a version number on there and status and there's status lights. Um, so this is great. This is what I had. I just I take this to, into the hacking team. They loved it. And in fact, so I mentioned before about my student who runs the local, uh, he's, the, he's the, the, uh, the operations manager for that cybersecurity company out of Virginia, he's the local office manager. He was my student. He was on the very first hacking team that ran this. So, and so it's, it's great. So it's like, it's cool to see, you know, and he, he enjoyed it. So this, everyone who used to have to get blasted this busy, you know, they have some fun with it. I had students come across, I uh, had this young lady. She, she, go, uh, she goes, I never, she's always taken an introduction to operating systems. I don't know anything about cybersecurity besides what they talk about. But she goes, this is fun. So she learned to pick the lock. And then she goes, look, she looked at the box. She goes, I bring something next week. I was like, sure. She brought a magnet in. She picked the lock and she put the magnet on and opened it and it worked. She goes, did I win? I'm like, you definitely won. I go, that's what it's about. It's about thinking outside, no pun intended, the box. And that's what it's about. It's thinking about the things that I didn't think about. And people are like, you're going to change, change the, you know, the challenge? I'm like, no, I'm not. Because if someone thinks of that and they can execute it, then that is the mentality you need to be a cybersecurity professional. Some part of it. That's a huge part of it, though, is trying stuff, not working try and fail, try and fail, look information as you go, and suddenly you find a chink in the armor. It was it was the best. So um, so you can see this this was this was the original sticker heist. Um, but there's some problems. So about a couple of years later it's like I started hauling and taking to um, uh, tech prep high schools and 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 demonstrating it here and there. And of course right there that that's prototyping board. You know if you ever doing kind of Arduino work or anything, we know the stuff does not bounce around the back of, of my Mini Cooper which has a great suspension. Um, stuff does not last back there. And you know how hard I try to keep it steady. Like I took it to one tech prep school and like the server came on, but the Arduino didn't work and ended up being a grounding wire and just jiggled loose, you know. And I was like, this is going to cause an issue. Plus I only have one. There's only one, you know, one heist box. So there's an Ohio Association of Two-Year Colleges. That's what the OAT 
TYC is we're in, we're all in tech. We know about acronyms. Um, I was like, yeah. So they said, we've been teaching awards, 50, 1500 bucks. Tell us what you're working on. And then um, I was like, well, yeah, it's like this box, it's falling apart. I need to make another one. I don't want to spend my money on it. Of course. Um, I like to make another one and also make, make one that's probably like more substantial. That's not in a Michael's art box. It's been drummled. Also, I can expand the challenges. I want to be able to do some stuff. I have a class called, uh, it's called Network Security. It's actually Security Plus. Um, I have a pen test class I, I, for the pen test plus. You know, I'd be able to maybe be cool to bring it into the classroom, do some stuff like that, make it more formal. And so, uh, so I won the award. And of course, my first thing is I went shopping went down a micro center in Cincinnati, <laughs> loaded it up. And then this is my first video printer ever. And then I bought, I got a sewing station and I brought some stuff from home, cleaned out what I had here. Um, and this is my little room. I served, this room is empty. And I was like, can I use this room? They're like, sure. And I served this, got squatters rights in here. And this became, um, what you'll see is larger now, but set the lab up. And then um, I started drawing out stuff, a design. Um, I started putting together, I started formalizing, actually formalizing the wiring. And I know it's like, the, that's a wiring diagram. Yes, that's my wiring diagram. Um, you know, I, I, I never had documented what wired to what. It was just, I just did it as I went. And I was like, I should probably document this. And like any good tech person, I did the documentation last. So, um, and so I had some ideas and uh, I found this this thing on Amazon. I was like, this is great. You can stack an Arduino and Uno on there. And I was like, yes, I bought one. Um, so I had like, you know, 12, I think I had 1200 bucks and I got the last 300 bucks this, this past year. Where I had to go present what I did with the money. Um, so I bought that. And I made this sort of core and uh, I was like, okay, I was like, cool. I said, I'm going to get my hands on Blender. I'm going to learn how to learn how 3D print. 3D printing, I can understand the physics of it. It's, there's, there's still a lot of stuff to learn about, but you know, level in the bed, temperatures, access. What is a learning curve to me was this. Yeah, it was that <laughs> going, wow, I just hit myself in the head with Blender and it was, and it hurt. I'm like, okay, I need something easier than this. And you probably like touch up. Why do you why are you loading Blender for? Yeah, someone recommended it, and I was like, this is not what I need. So I think, yeah, Tinkercad. So <laughs> it's like Legos. Drag me a box over. I need a box with a box and a hole in it. And it's like, okay, this worked. So I actually used Tinkercad and um, started designing a way to put this box together. So uh, there's the actual box. Now I made a couple of variations of this, but there's the box. Um, I was going to reuse. I still reuse the clear sticker box just to keep that off. Um, but there were some mistakes. Yeah, I didn't realize millimeters and Z axis. Yeah, I was like, that's a little short. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a whole pile of my mistakes, which actually not too bad. That's which I try to find use for, as you can see. <laughs> like this box is not working, or it's the it had, it had adhesion problems and it's all bent up in the corner. I'll, I'll be a good box for wires, so I try to reuse what I could. And that's still that's still stuff still back there in my in my lab. Uh, but there's a progress um, as I went through. I actually printed out a box and it fit. The thing fit inside there. Um, I made a top for it. This is a little harder. Here's a trick: if you do take a Tinkercad, find an existing, existing STL file, like for these, like for like this, this right here, these little pieces, and just you import it and you drag it in there, and then you group it all together, and suddenly now it's one. <laughs> so, uh, so I went over and it's that's you know do some work. Uh, I made I made holes for wires, but I realized how bulky they were, so I had to make a few different tops. Um, but I did test fit everything sort of loosely fit. And you can see this is what the new box would look like. Uh, added a power button for the uh, Pi because I had to have the remote in and do shutdown command. <laughs> so save myself that. Um, then I was like, okay, let me get a wiring shield. I, I, I looked at using a shield and putting resistors on there. And I was like, ah, let me just get this wiring shield and try this. Um, I actually wired it up. And yeah, it's, you'll learn wiring takes a lot more space than you think. <laughs> So my rat's nest was pretty bulky, but I got the fit. I got the corporate together and you can see, so it, of course RFID in the care lights. This is the display. It's used to display the stats of the, of the alarm system. And this, of course is the idea is there's a keypad here. Maybe it's because if the manager loses the RFID, there's an override code or something to get in. And of course there's a little OLED here that has information on it. Um, and uh, I have power, so I power it up and but they had issues. Uh, as soon as I fired it up, I log into, uh, well, yeah, this was actually, as soon as I fired it up, um, I went back to the other one to check, to get some files off it. And it had a bad, it had a bad boot. The original one broke. <laughs> so no, bro, it had a bad, bad SD card. Luckily I plugged it into, into my Linux laptop and I just, did, I just basically just, you know, uh, 
attached to it and I copied all the files off. So it was a bad boot sector, it looked like. Um, and then on the system that I was making, I got this bad boy. It would just lock up the entire OS, you know, running the GUI as like overcurrent. So I went in and I took apart everything I rewired. And I put one thing back together at a time. And it was that, oh, and that big LED, as soon as I plugged it in, bam, it happened. So I caused it, maybe it was a bad one. I got number off the shelf and it worked. So, so what I thought was going to be a disaster, um, that's my lab, by the way. Um, uh, actually, it wasn't too bad, but it felt like that at times. So I'm like, wow, this is an uphill battle. So, but so I went troubleshooting it. Yeah, it was this, this little uh, thing was bad. So, and you can see it put together, but I was able to get to work and I fixed it. So, there it is. That's the top of the box. Um, you can see there's an IP address, and there's a host name, and there's the version number. Of course, and you in the audience here knows so, you know, that's the kind of stuff you want to know if you're a cybersecurity professional. Oh, version number, okay, write that down. And that's the thing, it's the, everyone just walks up and they look at it. Um, and that's the best part. The best part, too, is it's like everyone get up and, and look at it and then share what you find. Some of those, I think I found some. I'm like, well, share it. Okay, hey, I found this. So what does that mean? I don't know. I think it is IP address. What's an IP address? <laughs> you know, you get, you get, and usually I find people who really know this stuff, they don't mind. It gives them a chance to flex a little bit to show, hey, here's what this means. You know, this is IP address and this, you know, and so on. And it, and it's great to see everyone interact like that. Um, so this is the box. Uh, I made a lids for it, of course, tops. I didn't attempt to print hinges. I just bought some 3M ones um, all set. It goes back inside there. And I have a little screw in the bottom that holds it in, and it locks closed. And there's a box full of laptops that holds. So this is what you see when you first get it. You just see this out here, and you see it on, on two lights. And of course, when I start the demo. I might go um, beep, you know, actually get my RFID, beep it, and then I tell the watch, watch everything. And I, of course, I come over, unlock the box. I go, ooh, stickers, and I re-beep it. Then maybe I'll have, then maybe I'll set the alarm off. I'll do like do like an accident, like I don't set it off, so they can they can see how the system works a little bit. Um, so that's what the current box is now. Uh, I actually had, had enough PLA material <laughs> and I, I made a second box. So I had 20 bucks. So I bought I had an extra Arduino laying around and actually had, I got an extra pie. It's always reason to buy more Raspberry Pis, right? Um, so I made a second box. This one I experimented with actually using these lights down here, but it was just, and I also had a, a louder thing on the bottom. It gave me something to play with. So this is what I have right now. I have these two boxes in my lab. Um, and this is what the, the ward was. And uh, again, there's some um, vulnerabilities in the system, I think from uh, physical, um, it could be if the group I'm dealing with is uh, maybe some seniors in high school and they don't know that much about cybersecurity and we don't have that much time to, to go over lock picking. I might just leave it unlocked, walk up, unlock it and do look at some stuff and then, then walk away and they go, hey, it's not locked. I'm like, there you go. They're like, what does that mean? I go, that's the kind of stuff you would report back in your, in your findings. If you're doing like a vulnerability, so like, why, why isn't it locked? <laughs> or take the lock off, go, why is there no lock on this thing? Da -da 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 um, but that's the stuff you see in there. I actually did not create some worksheets. Um, so I brought this into my class which is a security plus class. And uh, I started running it a little bit the previous semester, but I ran a full one this semester. And I don't know, Mike, you cannot, was, if you saw the uh, news now, the news story about it or not, I can share the link in chat if you didn't, but I'll share I, the link. I think I saw two different news stories. I think both were related to the grant. Yeah, yeah. So I can, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll just, I'll put one, one link in chat and it'll take it everything, but so I made these things, um, I made ways, of course, you know, for the hacking club, it's fun. It's just, we talk about how to hack and the idea is we go through, um, I'll, I'll show you here. It's called heist school. Um, and this is the process I talk about. So, you know, it's all, all roads lead to recon. <laughs> so vulnerability scan, go back to recon, find something, go back, check it out again, or maybe just try to exploit work. Okay, pivot, right? You get in, exploit, pivot, recon. And so um, so I made this, this to show the hacking club team and uh, actually rolled it into some of this stuff here. So actually, and I, um, to make it more academic, then we talk about things like, uh, you know, looking at OWASP, top 10, IoT device security. So, you know, what stuff you find, what does it map to? You know, I, I, I always, I love OWASP. I always use OWASP a lot in my, in my teaching. It's fantastic, um, this whole, this, you know, service for security professionals. So, um, and then I have a lab, there's a lab that's called CORD. CORD's an acronym, which I forgot. It's a, uh, but it has these two labs where you do more like just realistic stuff. And one of them you have to create security policies. 
And so we use the SANS templates, Institute templates, and I tell them, hey, you know, create three policies for things you found on this. So you hence close the loop, right? Go from just being a hacker to a security professional. So I was doing this already, um, mapping it to, you know, my syllabus at the time. Of course, I'm going to rebuild this entire class <laughs> this summer. Um, but uh, it maps, stuff maps in, give them a week to hack on it. And the cool part was uh, because we use something called NetLabs. Uh, for this class, which is great because all online students have everyone online. You can have a Chromebook, you can have a high-end laptop. Everyone has the same access. They have all the systems you need, um, PDF step by step. And so when we, I write teach my lab day is like, hey, come on in, do the lab if you want, or stay at home. You want know, to drop in for five minutes, ask me a question. That's cool. I don't do attendance like that. I mean, come on, we're all IT professionals. So we're going to be, and you know, you got to learn to work remote and you know, be able to manage your own workload. Working remote, I think, is an important skill set. So, uh, and most of the time, lab days are pretty thin. Could you come in? We talk about the questions, go over the concepts, and we might cut it short, or I'll stick around and talk about stuff. Lab days, when I ran this this past fall, were full, and that's and that's the uh, what I'll put. I'll show you the link to is the uh, the news came out from Cincinnati. Uh, Spectrum One News came out and did a story on it. So that lab, that was full every every week. We did this. They'd be like, "We doing we doing the sticker heist? Sticker heist?" It was great. And if I got to send that, that's the students. So I blurred their faces out, but at the time I didn't have a, a, um, a official form, photo release form. So I got to think of FERPA, <laughs> but uh, all of them signed one later because they came in and, and uh, the news came to this classroom here. So, so cool part was it would even be bigger. So we thought this is huge. And I actually just got a national science foundation grant uh, for $646,000 uh, to take this thing to the next level. So now we're doing stuff like um, making a, making, of course, making a box, which I'll, I'll give you some inkling to that. Making a whole new box. I'm making a single box now, not two. Uh, that wire between them is a huge fail point. Um, Limiting all the wiring as possible. Um, working with a company here in Moraine, Ohio, that will do the printed circuit board. So do a PCB where they can attach to it. Um, of course, now this is all in design. Uh, and we're still working. Um, oh, so I mean, we're working with some Moraine Valley College in Chicago. And I've got some other folks on as contractors to help out with uh, both the material design, um, also the educational material. But it, looking at more is it won't be just a high box. You'll get an entire kit. Like I'm going to do like a branded, I say branded, because we actually have our <laughs> brand, a branded like Pelican case with a box in it like maybe three Kali laptops, note, swag notebooks, um, USB key. Uh, it's in my bag over here. I can't take it out, but I have a branded cool round USB key, um, which have all, of, all the documentation on it. So if you're a, a facilitator, you can be a high school teacher or a college professor, you have, all, you have the answer sheet and you have ways to run the heist. So like, you know, is it a, how much time do you have? How big is the group? What's the experience level? So we're going to do all that stuff. And of course, all those worksheets, in case you're a, a teacher or you know, a professor, you can bring it into your classroom. So the grant's going to take it to that level, as well as physically take it to a whole new box. Um, and uh, of course, I don't have the wrong one. Uh, I was on my laptop. I do have this though. Um, so the box itself, uh, it's PDFs. Um, at the time, I was working on, what's it called? Oh, yeah, never mind. Box one. Sorry for flipping around here. I wrote this on my laptop. I linked to files on my laptop, but this will work. So I actually went ahead and started drawing out a box and um, a single box, like a safe in front. And I'm going to do a uh, the three lights, the new three light thing I found. I actually, shine lights also into it. So it'll be a clear. Uh, door so like if it's you know armed like like you know glow red you want that cool Hollywood effect right um, uh, you know added extra power bunch reset buttons um, clear door to see so and I've got the measured it out I've been working on this um, and then the print circuit board so you get the idea here that's what I'm currently working on is the Pi and the Uno sort of position like this and there'll be a circuit board that works as a a uh, called they call it a shield or a hat plug into the Uno and then eliminate as much as possible wiring. Um, I think just one or two wires. Um, so I'm working with the company right now on designing this as well as the box itself. Um, and of course, even better is I have stickerheist.com. So when I first started that idea of, you know, like, like, like this might be a national science, science, national science, no, oh my God, NSF, we'll go with that, NSF grant. Um, I was like, I want to, I want a place to put all my stuff. And so that's what this is, stickerheist.com. Um, and I have everything from the history of it, which you can see some same photos, um, to the lab, to when I built the, the uh, second box, but also my new lab, 
<laughs> which I got set up. And we're talking about three. Mike, I was talking with Mike about three printing earlier because um, I have now this guy set up here. I got this beautiful. If I can zoom in here, I don't know if that works or not. It probably doesn't work over Zoom. Um, but yeah, I got a high-end printer with a larger, larger bed size. This is my old one. I have assembly area. I have a test coding and testing area. I got my parts in my office set up. So I got. So we're looking to make probably about, I think uh, maybe fifty to seventy or maybe a hundred boxes. So when the box itself um, gets designed out here, uh, I'm going to as my swag. Um, and uh, actually, these are the links to the current old box off the site. Um, I share about everything except for the code. I have the I do have the GitHub locked down because you know I know a savvy student will uh you know go looking at GitHub. Which they do good for them, but I'm I've got some defense in place. And actually, this is printed out today. This is <laughs> my first print. Is that that box design right there? Of that with the with the mounting screws and stuff. So that would be maybe the box top. So we're just starting off. It started at the beginning of October, um, but we're definitely pushing forward pretty quick. I have a really great team. Um, so I'm, I'm the, they call PI or principal investigator. My co-PI, one of my co-PIs is my, is my department chair. He's been on like a million grants and he helps me all the red tape. I'm like, like, what about budgets and stuff? He's like, don't worry about it. Just do this. So uh, it's, it's almost like I've been fortunate to be able to have, um, professional Kyle Jones as my co-PI. Also he's out, you know, he's constantly traveling and he was at a, a NIST K through 12 conference and the NSA got word of this and they're like, they want to look to help fund something to get into educational system, you know, get into um, schools or clubs. And Ohio has a, uh, a thing that they want to go ahead and do and do some clubs. So we're going to be putting these out, these things out probably in a year, these kits, and we'll have trained the trainer sessions. We're going to bring in uh, teachers from local schools here and colleges and also in Chicago area schools. And we will give them a box and train them for like a one day session to show what the box is made out of. Here's, here's the answers. Here's how you hack into it. And then maybe do like an actual run through it. Um, and uh, a couple of things about too, is the grant is actually have it already actually have it working too, is there's actually going to be a medium and hard mode right now. It's the easy mode. Um, but you just SD card, you pull the SD card out, put the new one in and, you, and as soon as it loads, it will load the new Arduino code on boot and also has a now new operating system. So now you have medium mode or hard mode and give you some hints. All you need for, for all of them, of course, is good recon skills, just observation. But uh, probably for easy mode is Nmap. That's probably the one, maybe Derby, but you don't actually need that just by curiosity looking at stuff. And I, I may have totally told, gave away the answer there. Um, Nmap, a simple Nmap, nothing fancy, just Nmap IP address to talk about what it is. And if you're dealing with students who maybe just have, you know, first or second year of college, they had the, you know, in like introduction to networking, they understand, okay, yeah, it's an IP address. I know what a port is. I, you know, I know what a service is. And then you talk about how these things could be, you know, as a good tool to be used. And it introduces them into um, that. So there's also a demo mode, which is really a guided walkthrough of it. Uh, so you can take it to like a high school um, or a club where people are really thinking about getting into cybersecurity. So the thing is, it's about how you present it and run run the heist. It could be as simple as if, like, if, if the folks here in this, I probably put it out there and say, all right, here's the rules and the step back and let you go at it versus maybe a group of high school students, which I did that. And they're like, uh, what does this mean? And so guide them through, say, what would you look at next? Let's look at MMAP. What does this mean? You know, what's, what's port number mean? What is HTTP? That's a web service. How would you interact with a web service, a web browser? You know, it's like, as you go through it, and then, of course, you find a web page, of course, is, is on there. But yeah, the hard mode, medium and hard mode. Yeah, you can need stuff like maybe um, Hydra, Metasploit for the hard mode. And I have some stuff baked into it, which I just baked in yesterday, which will work with high, uh, with Metasploit. Uh, I have a, I don't get, I don't get away too much there, but one of the services could be hacked with the Metasploit module, if you know what you're doing. So, and of course the harder mode, I removed some of the easier stuff, um, simple things that are still valid, but that can make it harder. So. So there's gonna be three modes and then a demo mode and the full um, and the full uh, array of documentation and facilitator information that will help them run a heist. So you know, I, I probably threw a lot at you there, but thank you. Um, and uh, so the site itself, uh, I'll just drop that in chat. Um, is that okay if I drop it in chat? I'm sure, right? Yep, chat's open for your use, anybody's use. Um, there you go. And I do have a um, my own. YouTube page, which uh, again, I, 
most people might not need it. Um, but I'll drop in there too. Um, yeah, most definitely. And, and, um, if you are going to be more active on LinkedIn, feel free to, uh, drop in your LinkedIn profile uh, oh, yeah. too, if you want people uh, yeah, to reach that. out to you that way. Yeah. Um, actually I think I have that somewhere <laughs> and then, uh, uh, let's see on the SF tab. I think I got some news here, a couple of things. Yeah. There's actually, I wrote, I had a post on Raspberry Pi about it too, but this was, this is one way it says three videos left. You, you click sign, you say, don't, don't sign me in. Yeah. It's sort of paywalled, which, um, and this is good, but you can see my, this is the student set that came out and, and yes, I wear a bow tie. Every time I teach, I wear a bow tie and yes, they're hand tied. So, <laughs> and, uh, but um, yeah, they they had yeah they did great. They had the fact we look we're we're over lock picking. We actually already did it. So as you can see, there's some laptops. I have laptops I provide with Cali on there. Um, they use their own laptops. They want to use Cali in a VM. So you do, I mean you don't need Cali Linux for the easy mode and map a web browser. I mean it's really all you need. So it's not tool heavy. Oh maybe SSH or some sort of remote access. Uh, there's a couple of ways. Um, don't want to get, I don't want to get too much away. <laughs> What's one of the hard things is I want to you know want to show you, but yeah. So now I have the Cyber Heist Labs, and since it's my grant, I call myself what I want. So I call myself the Chief Hacking Officer, and I told the I told the uh, provost, I'm like, because I'm I call myself what I want, that's what I'm calling myself. They're like, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, I try to keep this updated um, just with information, and then there's stuff on here. Um, yeah, I was looking at making a version three with this hack board, which I bought one. Um, and with a full LED screen, that's been archived for now, but even I did buy the stuff. <laughs> um, sort of idea of all the stuff I use in it. Um, again, the, the GitHub is private, so, but uh, if someone wants to, I can share it with them individually. If you're curious about what the actual, um, what the flags are and capture the flag, there are a series of flags and, you know, to get you in, but these are LinkedIn or uh, LinkedIn linked to Tinkercad. So I try to share, you know, this is, this is one of those things where it's not really, um, you know, there's no, this is not for profit. This is something I want to share with the community. I mean, I'm a professor, I'm definitely not for making money. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, uh, if I, you know, people are like, you're going to patent it. I'm like, no, I'm like, this is, this is, this is for the community. This is for educators. This is for people who want to run clubs, you know? Um, but yeah, we're looking at three years of work. Um, hopefully has some really good design stuff real close to, um, I don't want to watch it, but we're using Fusion 360. I am lucky, uh, one of the professors in, in Chicago, he, he does uh, design manufacturing and he knows how to throw together buy stuff in, in you know, in uh, 3D modeling software. So I'm giving him the, this one of those markup, those PDFs I sent to him. He's like, yeah, he's like, check it out. You, you print up in 360. I'm like, that's exactly what I want. That's great. And I download it and I print it. <laughs> so, and then I'm going to print probably a few boxes over the next year. But when we get to the point where print out a box, tweak it, look at it, and uh, also look at this, the whole heist itself, how it's working and everything's laid out, you know, we'll have to refine it. You know, it's, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a prototype process. And to the point where we have it nailed down, I'm going to have that outsourced, probably have 50 or 60 boxes created. I have a company already. I can get on contract for the grant. Um, print circuit boards again, uh, even the print circuit boards. I'm going to have. Um, I'm going to have like we have a fake company called uh, Sticker Security Incorporated. I don't think I have them on here, do I? Um, I, I made a fake company. Um, I'm even going to make fake business cards. Uh, this, I'll say it's on the inside of the door. There, there's an envelope that's locked away, and in, and in there is some stuff. One of them is a business card, and I just put my inside there. And one of my students goes, "Hey, he goes, we use this for social engineering." It's like, oh, that's a that's a brilliant observation. I was like, I need to make some fake business cards, so I, I took notes of that. And this is just past fall, so um, I don't get too much else away. But uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, oh, Sticker Security Incorporated logo, which is great because um, it was, uh, yeah, here you go, company logo. Yeah, the idea is it's a safe, it's, you know, Sticker Security Incorporated. And of course, you know, the sticker heist is the bandit mask <laughs> on top of that. So, um, and then of course, I'm going to make a custom sticker. I pulled off the sticker heist. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to juggle <laughs> with this. I got a lot of people we're working with, um, you know, uh, Ohio Cyber Reserves. They want to get on it. A um, bunch of schools already talk about running a competition. So I might make some challenge coins, maybe some, uh, I might make, make some professionally make challenge coins that I can give to them. But they're like three or four of these tech prep schools. Like we want to do a competition so you can hack into it. And I was like, oh man, that's, that's awesome. So that'd be cool to help them out that way. 
And uh, nothing says, you know, after this three years is up with this grant to go with a version two, which make it nationwide, make it we can ship it out. You know, we don't do anything for profit. So being a being a state run school, um, we are looking at a model where it could be like a break even model. Uh, we use at our here in Sinclair, we have a manufacturing department has a has a um, a guitar lab where they make guitar parts. They actually mill them and the students make them and they, and they make parts in bulk and they sell them and then they use the money just to keep the lab running. And of course, me as a guitar player, if you can't see, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to make a guitar. Um, uh, and we're like, that could be a model we can use and make the lab even bigger, um, you know, expand the lab out, maybe look at other devices. I have other ideas too for this Cyber Heist Lab, I'm calling it. It's a clear Cyber Heist Lab, so. But in any case, I will leave it there. I will stop sharing my screen for now and uh, leave out any questions. I'll open chat up here. Um, questions or comments? Um, I'm going to mute so I can take a sip of water here. Mike, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. This is super interesting. And, and uh, of course, one of the reasons uh, besides our, our mutual friend uh, and, and PJ that I reached out to you, because this is certainly of interest to us. You know, I spoke earlier about how we operate to lift others. And this is one of these opportunities that we look for and how we can continue to do more outreach in the communities that we meet in and having something like this on hand, whether it's during a physical meetup uh, where, where it's, it's this group meeting or we get the opportunity to go to schools whether that's middle school, high school, local colleges, or local events even, take this, it's, it's easily packable. You can just pick it up and go. Um, and with the newest iteration, you don't have to worry about it bouncing around in the back of a mini. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that this is definitely of interest uh, of, of mine. I'm, I'm hopeful that other people on here find it just as interesting. Uh, we look for little things like this, uh, with little ideas where you could teach these different concepts in a gamified way. And in a portable way where you can go out into the community and go to these different events, different locations to teach things and make them, make them easily accessible as well. Um, it's fantastic. And the idea that you had of doing different levels, I, that just, that's golden. You know, you can start with the easy mode either for, for K through five or middle school and knock it up the medium for high school, high for, high for your scout, your college or meetup groups, you know, those different opportunities <laughs> I was just thinking when you said the hard mode, I was thinking, oh, you know, you could take off that um, that padlock and put in put on a combination lock because oh, yeah. it, it's it's interesting that and there's a book out there. It's in the it's in the public domain. I forget the the name of it. It's something like safe cracking, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it talks about the theory behind combination locks and and how uh, just like how you have your tumblers and pins and your regular locks and there's certain tolerances that allow you to do things like lock picking. Oh yeah. Uh, this comes into play with combination locks as well. And there's only so many combinations that you can actually have on a given size dial because of the tolerances that exist. So uh, just by playing with math and and, 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 and permutations, you can actually quickly pick, you know, air quote, <laughs> uh, pick a combination lock. But uh, unless you actually know that, it, it seems like it's a hard thing to do. Um, so, you yeah. know, that might I was going to add but something. I, yeah. Oh, and the cool thing is, you know, so... You know, the idea is when this kit will have, you know, uh, I bought clear practice lock, you know, the lock picking ones, because it's still, you know, keeps keep the source simple and it'd be a lock, a lock pick kit. But also, of course, you can imagine some high schools will freak out lock pick kits in our high school. Well, then you don't, you know, we don't have to ship that or you just oh, I don't don't expect you know, to put it out there. And I actually want to put some TSA locks. Oh, yeah. One of my colleagues was like, and then it's like, just, just put zero or one, two, three, and then maybe have that code somewhere in the system on, 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 on like a text file or just you can leave the locks off completely. And I did that uh, Friday last week. We had four high schools come through. It was like a career tech day. And they said, can you do this ticker high thing? I'm like, 30 minutes with 20 to 30 high school junior seniors. But I did, did basically had, it was more like, come up and tell me what you see. And I did everything, all like the end map stuff on my screen. So so even if you don't have laptops, you can only have just a box. There's a lot of ways you can, you can bring it forth um, just to demonstrate what it is, you know, about cybersecurity, but I'm sorry to interject there, but yeah. No, that that's great. And yeah, that's a good example too, where you don't have to have the interaction if you don't have the time or people don't have the equipment, you can still give the demo. It's like a demo mode. Um, and the other thing exactly. too that I, that I call on that you said, Jim, that like just happened recently was the whole idea of, of the business card being a social engineering or open source intelligence, um, teaching moment, right? And to have information in there that leads somebody down that path and actually have a whole uh, shell corporation or 
uh, and and people like your puppet accounts set up and make that yet another challenge on top of it, right? So that's that's really cool. I like uh, what you're doing with this, and um, hoping that at the point where you release it, uh, we can get our hands on on one of them, uh, or I can work with you off the side to 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 make one down here uh, that I could take around uh, if you're willing. So oh, definitely, uh, yeah. I mean. I mean, you know, besides three printing the material, you know, that which it sounds like you already do that. Um, uh, and cool thing is, like I said, you can take it and you can modify it. And that's what I'm, what I'm, I'm going to do is we're going to create a, um, what's it what's it called? Open shell. Oh, shit, I forgot what it's called. And there's like a um, open canvas. You can make an open canvas account and have all the documentation and stuff up there. And like images of each, of course, like, you know, a zip file, a zipped image of each of so the easy, medium, hard mode. And of course, they'll be on the USB, but in case maybe you lose it. USBs yeah. get lost. Uh, that way you can download the, and re-image it. And um, in case you, and of course, me, if you're experienced, you can mess with this. And it'd be cool to have like a community where you can dump back in and say, "Hey, by the way, we made our, you know, we made our fake shell company to go with it." That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, I thought about doing stuff like that, but right now though, I'm making it very local because it's a standalone Wi-Fi yes. network. You don't need any connection to any kind of school network. If we can get connection to the network, man, you could bring us some cloud, like make an unsecured cloud instance. Wow, it's like the possibilities are endless. But of course, I have to deal with the fact that it has to go to schools. And right. I, I know a school IT could be like, no, no, nothing against IT, but yeah, no, no hacking allowed here. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to teach our students that knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had already had discussions with them. I'm like, come on, I'm like, you got to step it up. If you're yeah. scared about a student having a Kali Lynx machine, that's not going to connect to your network. And I'm worried about your network, <laughs> but that's yeah. the, that's separate. <laughs> Definitely, uh, for those types of challenges, and anybody who's in the realm and interested, uh, we have a YouTube video up on our channel uh, under Southwest Florida Sec or Swiftful Sec on YouTube. If you look us up, we have a, an interview with a person, uh, Will. His name's Will. He works out at the Pima College in Arizona, where they set up a cybersecurity uh, hacking lab. And one of the largest challenges was convincing IT of the school to allow that. Um, because the students would be allowed to uh, attack each other on the on on the equipment within that lab, and uh, run their own data center, and it was going to actually be open to the community too. So I think almost like a hacking space instead of a make space maker space, it was a hacker space where people could come in from the community even who weren't even members of the school and actually learn about cybersecurity too. So it's an interesting concept and and one we're trying to push down here with. Um, I've been recommending it to Florida Southwest or FSW, and I know recently I think their program coordinator did reach out to Will, and they started talking. So hopefully that's progress. But you know, as you know, being in the in the in the uh, academia, things can take a while to take hold and, and progress. But yeah. it's a it's a positive uh, move forward. So that's great. Oh, it is, yeah, definitely. And yeah, and the thing is, you know, this is not going to take place. There's still definitely a place. There's need for online labs, need for you know uh, capture the flag type environments. This is just you know it's a small niche. I think that this thing fits into and seems a lot of classes want that and uh, we, the best thing again is when you get people together and start they start then they, you know first the students are like all sitting there quiet like come on up get up come here and, and then look at it and then they see something and someone says oh, i think i found something I'm like well what'd you find like oh i think i found this and then and then, then, it, then it starts and then it's, they start becoming a heist team right so like an right. ocean's 11 type of thing and then you know one person's gonna pick in locks and they end up oh, okay you'd be you'd be the team rogue you know and and it's and it's fantastic when that happens, and uh, and then they get they get a good blast out of it. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just, I mean, sorry, go ahead, Megan. I yeah, know you've I just want to say yeah, I love that you have the worksheets and you're bringing like the academic part to it because a lot of times we we learn right, we learn from books, we learn you know in a classroom, and we also do, but I've never really seen something combine the two worlds in a nice way, and I think that that would really resonate. Um, so you're not just you know, trying to learn, you know, a lot of things, you know, doing a CTF, like you're, you're sort of getting the skills, but you're not seeing that relationship back to what you're learning in a textbook. So I really appreciated that part. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And me being working in, you know, still work as, you know, on the, on the side, I guess I mentioned before, you know, doing pen testing, mobile app pen testing and stuff is, you know, um, I teach a pen, pen test class. That's where that, that whole talk I talked about, Mike, is I gave a talk to the local sites here called the, the you know, zen and pen testing because it's you know yeah it's great to hack something but there's going to be a lot of stuff can you bring it back around and like help the client and yeah like, like i said i can't stand for OWASP having those cheat sheets you know it's like your passwords are bad here's a cheat sheet to help you fix your passwords you know and and but also yeah i mean you talk about security policies it's like you know blah, boring right you know sorry lecture, lecture about security policies but at least now the people we can see okay that makes sense now 
we need to write a policy for better locks or write a policy for whatever they find. There's there's a few find, there's a list of findings, they, things they find, and they had to keep track of those. And so, yeah, helps, it definitely makes sense to bring it back around and close that loop. And then ideas make them a security professional, not just a hacker. So Yeah, I think that's great uh, pulling it all the way around because some people get this idea because it's it's Hollywood. It's been romanticized. That they only get the sense that hacking is what's shown on TV and what's in the movies. And really that's 2%, 5% of the job. You know, the it's, rest it's of the it fun is, part. But yeah, you're yeah, right. It's yeah, definitely it, the fun part, but the rest yeah. of it's report writing, it's the investigation, it's the hand holding, it's trying yeah. to convince your client to actually change stuff. Uh, all the harder things that they don't actually show in the movies and the TV shows um, that yeah. uh, it's good to make the students aware of that. Because otherwise, if they're not and they get into a job and they find out, oh, this is not what I expected, yeah. then and then and yeah. every, it's I always give out root shells. Like I think only I can let, let kind of kind of one hand them times over eight years of pen testing. Have I gotten any kind of sh remote shell? I mean, see if you call SQL, yeah, they get a SQL shell, but it's pretty rare. I mean, a lot of times you're going to find stuff that our you know our patch CV that you know. And that's one thing too is when the worksheets you didn't see, but uh, Megan you brought, which mentioned is uh, actually um. I've been, of course, I've been changing those worksheets, modifying them. This is all, I tell, I tell the students, you guys are beta testers, but I made it where they had to create their own CVSS score for their findings. So, and then they have to categorize, okay, you can only choose three things to fix. What three things would you fix? And then they use their scores and then they then create security policies for those. So, yeah. And a big shout out to the OWASP cheat sheets. Those are fantastic. Um, OWASP top tens, there's many of them, all the cheat sheets, the testing guides that they've put out as well for mobile, for web, for other things and the controls too. And there's so many resources. Um, if you, if you haven't checked out an OWASP group, see if there's one in your area and see if it's active. Uh, otherwise go to the global OWASP page. Great discussion tonight. Anybody else have questions? All right. Well, thanks for the presentation tonight, Mike. Again, we appreciate your time and coming out, hanging out with us, uh, your time afterwards to, to answer questions and help out our attendees as well. Um, you're welcome back anytime to hang out with us, whether it's here in our monthly meetings or on our Discord channel. Feel free to drop in. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, and hang out. Uh, feel free to promote us from your end, too, because as you know, we are meeting virtually uh, we are welcoming to students too. If, if students are looking to get uh, involved in communities, there should be some communities there in Ohio, but sometimes people like to find out about communities in other spaces, other spaces in other states, states <laughs> um, uh, too. And and sometimes topics vary. So, you know, it you gives, make, a, us gives a variety. <laughs> make us extra credit. There you <laughs> nice. go. I'll tell you who joined. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs>